Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this ingenious fit Wi-Fi 6 2x2 outdoor wireless access point. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. If you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So this is part of the Ingenious Fit series. This is another access point in that series. This is the EWS 377 Fit. So this is an indoor Wi-Fi access point. This is an outdoor Wi-Fi access point. So if you're interested in my video on this, I'll put a link to it in the description. So the Ingenious Fit product line is targeted towards organizations like small businesses. So the idea is to give these organizations enterprise style networking for a more affordable price and with less complexity. So there's also the Ingenious Cloud product. So you could use Ingenious Cloud in a small business, but it may be overkill for your application. Ingenious Cloud might be better for a hotel or a hospital. Maybe you have a coffee shop. This might be a better option for you because you may just need some of the more basic Wi-Fi features. So let's get this open. So this has a couple ways to manage it. You can use the cloud or they have a local controller. I'll be setting it up on the cloud. And this is managed with an app on iOS or Android. And there also is a web interface that is coming out. It's not out at the time I'm filming this. So pull that out. So here we have a placard with two QR codes. We have one for the quick start guide and one for the app. The app is the Ingenious Fit Express app. So here's the access point. So this has an IP67 waterproof rating. So that's a very good waterproof rating. That'll easily handle the elements. So this is very hefty. It feels really sturdy. So we have antennas on the bottom and top. We have 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz, 5 and 2.4. On the side, we have status LEDs. On the back, we have some keyhole slots. We have a grounding lug. I covered up the QR code and the serial number here, but those are there. And it also will have a mounting bracket to go on here. So here's the grounding cable. And here's the mount, like so. So there's a screw here, and these will go in these slots, and that screw will lock it in. So you'll take that screw out, you'll slide this in, and screw it in. So then we have these tabs here for these band clamps. So you can mount this to a pole. Of course, you could also screw this to a surface for mounting. So there are many mounting options for this. So here we have a PoE injector. This is the Ingenious EPA5006GR. So this is for supplying power to the access point. So the nice thing about this is you don't have to run separate power to it. This runs off power over ethernet. So if you want this outside of say your coffee shop for an outdoor patio, you can run a network cable outside and you run it in here with this weatherproof seal. And then you run it back to your network equipment and plug it in here in the PoE port and then plug the other side into your network equipment and it will run power and network over that one ethernet cable. So that makes it a lot easier to install than if you had to install it outdoor rated outlet and things like that. Here's some compliance paperwork as four antennas. Here's the power cord and here's some mounting hardware. We have anchors here. We have large and small anchors for different kinds of applications. Here's the grounding screw and we had those clamps earlier. So let's take a look at this here. I'll unscrew this. We'll pull this plug out. Might be hard to see there, but there's an ethernet port in there. We'll pull this rubber plug out, we'll pull this apart, and this grommet will split in half like so. So I have a network cable. I'll place this in here. Now this one has a strain relief on it. Might be too long. I don't think that's going to fit like that. So I'll pull that one out. So this can be a little tricky to get these out of here. I'll typically take a screwdriver and I'll go in here and I'll press the tab and then pull it out. Like so. I probably should have known better than to put this in there, but it was a good demonstration that it's not ideal. You typically want one like this. You can see the difference here. Oftentimes when you'll run this, you'll run this cable and then put the end on later so you won't have that strain relief. So we'll use this cable. Okay, so I have my network cable here. Place the nut over it. Place this black part with the curve towards the connector. I'll place the split rubber gasket there and I'll put these two together. I'll go in here and plug that in. I'll place the rubber there, slide the next part up, and then this over it. Then I'll tighten this down here. As you can see, there's a gap there with the network cable. I'll continue tightening this. There we go. 
and now we have that weather tight seal. So you'll notice I did not put the antennas on yet. I find it easier to do that after you put the cable on. So next we can put the antennas on. Now these are labeled. We have 2.4 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz. So we'll just screw them on. So this will plug into the PoE on the PoE injector. So that's labeled here, it says PoE. And I'll plug power into the power. And then I'll plug network in the other side. Should see the power light on here in just a second. Oh, actually it's on right now, it's just not very bright. And then we have lights here flashing. So we'll go set this up in the app now. Now real quick though, if there was any confusion though, that LAN is going to connect into your switch or your internet router. And this black cable here would represent the longer cable. So this might be 50 feet of cable that's running from your network equipment to your outside location where you have the access point. Okay, so I'm in the Ingenious Fit Express app. I'll tap on my RickMake Studio network I set up. And we can see if I hit access point, it'll show my indoor access point. So at the bottom of that page, I'll hit the plus. It says add new device. I'll hit add device. I'll go to the QR code on the back of this. So needless to say, you'll want to set this up before you install it in a hard to reach location. I'll scan the QR code with my device. It says name your device. I'll leave it as is and I'll hit next. It says your device is ready. The newly added device might take five to eight minutes to upgrade the firmware when it first connects. It'll be finished when that light is solid, the power light. So I'll say manage device. So I'm going to leave this for a few minutes and I'll come back after that light is solid and we'll finish setting it up. Okay, so we're set up under my devices now. We see my 377 that I had previously set up and my 850 that we just set up. So I tapped in through here while it was setting up and on the firmware it said 101 and the lights were still flashing on the side. And then when they stop flashing, I refresh this and then it said 102. So I always recommend to people to upgrade the firmware when they put new hardware on the network. This does it automatically for you. So that's really nice. So let's test this access point. So I have the other access point nearby. So I'm just going to go and plug it for this test just to make sure that we're connected to the new one. So now I'll head over to my MacBook. I'll go into my Wi-Fi settings and I had set up the RickMake Studio Wi-Fi network. I'll connect to it. Now on my Mac, I can hold down Option and hit the Wi-Fi symbol and it will give us information about the access point we're connected to. So we're connected at five gigahertz. Now I have a network test on my network. This is going to check my network speed. So this is not going out on the internet. This is a nice way to test access points because if you have a slow internet connection or even slow access to the speed test server that can skew your results. So I'll start this test here. And here we're getting looks like around 600 megabits per second. Okay, so our final results are around 650 download and around 500 upload. So this is a 2x2 two two access point, so this is not going to give you as fast as speeds as a 4x4 four four like the previous indoor one. So while it's not as fast as the internal one, it's still incredibly capable. You can do a lot of things with 640 megabits down and 500 up, and that's a lot faster than a lot of people's internet is even going to be. So in a lot of cases, this won't even be the bottleneck of the system. So that's the Ingenious Fit Wi-Fi 6 2x2 two two outdoor wireless access point. So an access point like this will allow you to add Wi-Fi to an outdoor space with relatively little effort. Now, you do have to be able to run a wire inside a wall and waterproof it and things like that. But once you get this mounted, you plug it in, go through the app, and it's pretty easy to set up. If you have a small business or organization with an outdoor space, it's a great benefit to have outdoor Wi-Fi. So this could be used at a restaurant or coffee shop on the patio. You could also use this at a recreation area or public garden or something like that. Now I guess some will say that you don't need Wi-Fi at a public garden. People are, should be there to view the flowers and things like that. But I would argue differently. It's a great promotion if people can connect to your Wi-Fi and maybe conduct live streams or share what they're viewing on social media. That can really help promote your business or organization. So if I were running a public garden, I would set up these access points, get internet on them, and I'd throw some signs up around saying, hey, we have public Wi-Fi, tell people how to connect to it, and then put your hashtag on there so when they share the pictures on social, it tags you. And then you can have your patrons promoting your business or organization. So only scratch the surface of what you can do with these. There are lots of different setups. You can set up a guest network on here. You can set up a 
captive portal. You can have open network or with password. So there are lots of options with this, but being the ingenious fit, it doesn't have some of the more advanced options that a person might not need. So that makes it, I think, easier to set up than the full ingenious cloud. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.